The following video will cover normal CT abdominal anatomy. We have a couple of objectives. At the end of this presentation, the learner will be able to identify the normal appearance of a variety of organs within the abdominal cavity, specifically the spleen, adrenal glands, kidneys, gallbladder, pancreas, liver, stomach, duodenum, and portions of the colon. You'll also be able to identify the following venous structures, the inferior vena cava, or IVC, hepatic veins, portal vein, and splenic vein. And finally, you'll be able to identify the following arteries, the aorta, the celiac artery, common hepatic artery, splenic artery, left gastric artery, the superior mesenteric artery, the renal artery, and last but not least, the inferior mesenteric artery. Firstly, I'd like to orient everybody to how the patient is positioned. This semilunar shape at the bottom air is the CT gantry, and it's what the patient is lying down as they enter the CT scanner. So this area over here is going to be posterior to the patient. Opposite area here is obviously going to be anterior. Over here by convention will be the right side of the patient, and here will be the left side of the patient. There are two additional things I'd like to point out before we go through the organs. Firstly, most abdominal CT scans, including the one shown here, are performed at about 70 seconds after giving intravenous contrast. But it's important to appreciate that sometimes we image earlier if we're interested in the arteries, and sometimes a little bit later if we're interested in certain specific pathology. Secondly, whereas this is a CT scan of the abdomen, it's important to realize that we also include a portion of the lung bases and with it the heart, because in doing so, we make sure that we image the entire superiormost aspect of the abdominal organs. As we scroll through these images, we're going to be scrolling caudally, that is, towards the feet of the patient. As we do this, the first organ I'd like to showcase to you is the spleen. We can see the spleen over here in the left upper quadrant. On this image, we can also see a portion of the left adrenal gland, the aorta, the inferior vena cava, as well as a portion of the liver. Over here is the stomach. So I'll continue to scroll downwards to get you a full extent of what the spleen looks like. And now I'm going to scroll upwards again. The next organ I'd like to showcase to you is the left adrenal gland. We can see it nicely over here. And it has this kind of triangular shape. And we'll see that again on the coronal slices. You can appreciate that triangular shape nicer on the coronal slices. On this image, we can also see a portion of the right adrenal gland over here. As we scroll downwards, we can see the left kidney and the right kidney. So we can scroll all the way down to get the full extent and back up again to see what the kidneys look like in the axial plane. And then we can also see the pancreas. So this is the pancreatic tail as it abuts a portion of the spleen, pancreatic body, the pancreatic neck, as we go down, we can see the pancreatic head, and the sharp, almost triangular-shaped structure is the pancreatic uncinate process. So I'm going to scroll all the way through that to give you an extent of what that looks like. Now in the right upper quadrant, we can see this sort of oval-shaped structure here. It's a little bit underdistended, but that's going to be the patient's gallbladder. And of course, around the gallbladder is going to be the liver. So we're going to scroll up and see the liver, and down again. We see the liver dome over here, and we can see this whole structure over here is going to be the liver with multiple vessels running through it. And some of these vessels I'll point out to you over here is going to be the main portal vein, goes into the liver and splits up into the right portal vein and the left portal vein. And we have multiple structures coming from the liver draining into the inferior vena cava. That's going to be the left hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein, and right hepatic vein. This person happens to have an accessory hepatic vein that's coming from the right hepatic lobe draining also directly into the inferior vena cava over here. As mentioned previously, this structure here is going to be the stomach. As we scroll down, we can see a different portion of the stomach, the distal aspect of it. And as we go down over here, we're going to see the duodenum. The duodenum comes across, goes from the right side of the patient to the left side of the patient, at which point around here, as it crosses the midline, it's going to become the jejunum. Other structures we can see this structure over here is going to be the descending colon. We can follow that all the way upwards to the splenic flexure, where it meets the transverse colon. You can see portions of the transverse colon as it goes across, going upwards now to the hepatic flexure near the liver. And again, downwards over here, this is the ascending colon. I'll also showcase some muscles, so everyone's aware where they are. Over here is the psoas muscle on the right side and on the left side. And just posterior to it, lying almost horizontally, is the quadratus lumborum muscle. Also on this image, you can see these three muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. The outermost muscle is the 
external oblique muscle. The next one is the internal oblique muscle. Well, the last one is the transverse abdominus muscle. In the midline, you can see the rectus abdominis muscle meeting centrally at a portion called the linea alba. I'll now showcase some of the arteries, and this is best seen on the arterial phase of this exam, performed at about 30 seconds after giving intravenous contrast. So the first big artery, of course, we see is the descending aorta. As it comes into the abdominal cavity, it becomes the abdominal aorta, right about here. And the first branch that it gives off is the celiac artery. The celiac artery breaks off into the common hepatic artery and the splenic artery over here. We can follow the splenic artery and see how it nicely goes all the way to the spleen. There's an additional branch that comes off over here and that's called the left gastric artery and that runs in the gastrohepatic ligament, this fatty ligament you can see over here. The next main branch off the aorta is the superior mesenteric artery. We can see it coming off over here and this gives rise to multiple branches that perfuse the small bowel as well as the majority of the colon. We can also see the right renal artery coming off at a similar level and the left renal artery coming off just a little bit lower. The last major branch off the aorta is the inferior mesenteric artery and that gives perfusion to the remaining distal portions of the colon as well as organs in the pelvis. So we'll now showcase some of the same anatomy that we've discussed but in the coronal plane. And so just to orient everybody before we go through the images, in the coronal plane, up here is the head of the patient, down here is towards the feet of the patient, and this side is the right side, this side is the left side. Now we're going to start by scrolling from posterior to anterior, and you know your posterior because you can see the lumbar spine and thoracic spine vertebral bodies coming into the image. So as we scroll from posterior to anterior, one of the first organs you're going to see is the spleen, that lives in the left upper quadrant. You can see its craniocaudid extent in this plane very nicely. Adjacent to it on this image, you can see the left kidney. And on the other side of the spine, you can see a portion of the right kidney as well as the liver that lives right above the kidney over here. As we scroll through these images, we can start to see the adrenal glands also coming into the picture. This triangular shaped structure that lives on top of the left kidney on the left side and on top of the right kidney on the right side over here. On this image, we can also see some of the muscles that we talked about, specifically the psoas muscles, as they extend down to the pelvis. And now as we scroll through these sets of images, we're going to start to see portions of the pancreas. This is the pancreatic tail. And if we focus on that, we're going to see the body come into the picture. Pancreatic neck over here. And that dives a little bit downwards to form the pancreatic head and the uncinate process over here. The gallbladder in this patient is relatively decompressed. And we can see a little bit over here adjacent to the liver. This, of course, is the liver itself. As we scroll now more anteriorly, we can see some of the hepatic veins coming in into the IVC, the inferior vena cava. And we can also see adjacent to the inferior vena cava is, of course, the abdominal aorta. Up here is the stomach. You can see the gastroesophageal junction in this location. This is the fundus of the stomach. As we scroll more anteriorly, you're going to get to the gastric body over here, the gastric antrum over here gastric pylorus, and that meets up with the duodenum, which runs downwards and goes across the midline over here to form the jejunum starting just as it crosses the midline. We can also see some of the large bowel in this image. Over here is the ascending colon, and around this area is going to be the hepatic flexure. At that point, this becomes the transverse colon. You can see the transverse colon very nicely, going all the way across the midline and up again in the left upper quadrant where now is the splenic flexure. Specifically, that'll be around this location. And then when you come downwards again, you can see the descending colon. On this image over here, you can see the main portal vein splitting up into the right portal vein and the left portal vein. This is the splenic vein that join, drains into the main portal vein. You can see it coming from the spleen. And this is the superior mesenteric vein, this structure over here, which drains the small bowel and the majority of the colon, and that drains into the main portal vein over here. To review some of the arterial anatomy in the coronal plane, we'll go back to our arterial phase images. And as you scroll from posterior to anterior, remember as you see the spine, that's more posterior. As you scroll more anterior, we can start to see the abdominal aorta. The first branch that comes off the abdominal aorta is the celiac artery. 
That gives rise to several branches, one of which is the left gastric artery going cephalid, the common hepatic artery going to the right, and the splenic artery, a portion of which you can see here, going to the spleen. The next big branch off the aorta is the superior mesenteric artery, which is going to be this branch over here that supplies the small bowel and the majority of the large bowel. And the last branch, of course, is the smaller artery, which is the inferior mesenteric artery that you can see coming off over here. On this image, we can also see the right renal artery going to the kidney, and the left renal artery arising a little bit more inferior to it going to the left kidney.